Greetings and welcome to In-Depth from DK Rostar. The Caribbean Industrial Research Institute, or CARIRI, has teamed up with other partners to offer 3,000 students training over the July-August vacation period. CARIRI CEO Hans-Eric Schulte joins us now to speak about the program titled the Innovation Nation Training Program. Thank you for making the time, Mr. Schultz. So we just saw 30 seconds, we see robots, we see coding, we see a lot of things. But I want to ask, though, what is Innovation Nation, please? Well, thank you, DK. Um, Innovation Nation is a career's trademark program for students. And uh, we've been offering this program since 2018, and we've seen it grow and evolve over the years. And uh, it's a program that's based around two United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals namely uh, quality education and climate action. And based on that, we've taken sort of a multidisciplinary micro-learning approach where we will explore three areas, namely coding and our STEAM courses, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, and climate action. Uh, basically, what we want to do is educate participants on the emerging concepts from an industry point of view and to showcase and highlight our possible career paths that they could pursue and explore moving forward. And I think it's always a good thing to have individuals exposed to industry standards, what is taking place, current trends, and have them even start to ideate what can, what can be past it. So sometimes people say you need to have the mind of a child to be able to break the status quo for the betterment of the society. But tell us, though, about the evolution of the program, please, because I see uh, you're talking about coding and stream, but it seems as though that it was originally the coding and innovation program. So what are some of the things that have led to the evolution of the program as it now stands? Right. Well, the program, as I said, started in 2018. We had started off with 280 students and a in-person environment. Um, of course, subsequent to that, we've had uh, the COVID pandemic, which has sort of forced us to adapt. And now we have a basic uh, remote uh, concept where um, people can access the program from any geographic location. And currently this year, as you had mentioned in your opener that we uh, targeted, we have about 3,000 students or so in the current program for this year. And while it has started initially uh, in, in 20 years, just coding, uh, expand it to more than that in coding and the music industry in terms of its application, uh, coding and astrophysics in terms of the concepts of the universe and planetary uh, distances and locations and things, exciting stuff like that. And we've gone further into innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, basically, we deliver ideation sessions to allow to show students how to take ideas and to formulate and concept into a business model that they can apply on a on a sort of a business a concept that they can then utilize in the real world. And finally, we have our climate action module, which will looks at things like sustainability, energy audits, uh, carbon footprinting, footprinting, uh, solar PV systems and maintenance and so on. And again, this is to instill the mindset of energy conscious, energy conservation, uh, look, way of looking at things. And so it has evolved beyond just coding to those broader concepts and the broader application of the said coding. And what you, you, you're talking, this talk, Mr. Schultz, and I'm getting very excited because it looks as though things are changing on a much more rapid sort of basis. So even moving from STEM to STEAM, including the component of art. Now I hear the stream in terms of looking at the importance of research, which is something that Kariri would be no stranger to. But even looking at the difference from 280 to 3,000, looking at the difference from uh, including that entrepreneurship component, astrophysics. Now, I'm a South boy, and one of the things that I used to kind of look forward to, as did a lot of people in my, in, in, in my circle, we're going to work in oil and gas. 
we have on a, a hard hat and your steel tip boots and that is something that you're really looking forward to and when you you in that position you've made it but looking and seeing that there can be so much more using the sciences uh, especially putting in that entrepreneurial concept but i want to ask though this year 2023 what is the most different thing? What makes this year's program different from others that you've run in the past, counting from 2018? Well, as I said, this year, it's a much more, it's more expanded in terms of what we're offering. As I said, it's gone beyond coding to include innovation, entrepreneurship, and, and to include climate action, things related to sustainability and, and, and carbon footprinting and solar systems and so on. And also the quantum, it's uh, we started off as an in-person thing for just about 280 students, and now it's a uh, remote. Meaning, once you have a computer, a laptop, or any kind of internet access device, you can access the program, and it's gone out to 3,000 plus students. So it has evolved both in the, the scale of the program and the scope of the program and what we are offering. And of course, uh, this of course is, uh, has been made possible through sponsorship from the private sector as well. And, uh, I mean, I take the time to mention Re Republic Bank, who has been a main sponsor on board, and we also have sponsorship from B-Mobile and Atlantic. And of course, we have support and approval from the Ministry of Education and our line ministry, Ministry of Planning and Development. So we, we've gotten a lot more participation and support, which has allowed us to broaden both the scope and a scale of the program. So that, that is really the main difference. And it continues to evolve, and we expect ne next year we'll be able to expand that scope and scale even further. And I'm glad you spoke about some of the partners that you have involved with it, because yes, it's one thing to say, okay, well, we have expanded scale and scope, but at the same time, no man is an island, and there would be individuals who have uh, resources, be it financial, to help things go through, or that expertise to help deliver those modules. But and with that in mind, though, I want you I want you to talk a little bit about the climate action module, please. Break it down. What do people come out of that module learning? How does it help? Because climate change is something that is very timely understandably so. But coming out of this module, what do you think uh, the individuals are going to be equipped with a little more? Right. Again, because it's based on United Nations sustainability goal, two goals, and one of them is climate action. The climate action will relate to areas of sustainability, uh, doing energy audits, uh, looking at carbon footprinting, in other words, the impact of businesses in terms of their carbon footprint and what can be done to reduce said footprint, and uh, also solar, solar PV systems, installation and maintenance. Um, we empower them, the students, to have an informed, energy-conscious approach in terms of the impact of what they're doing on the climate and everything that they do relating to climate action. So it covers those, those specific areas within the area of climate action. And coming out of this, then, they would be able to apply some of that knowledge including the energy audits, including solar PV systems and so on. So it, it gives them a broader appreciation of what is possible and gives them real world application coming out that hopefully they can build and expand upon and maybe even make a career out of it, uh, you know, going beyond to pursuing something that they may have not thought about before. Definitely is uh, helping to expand horizons is always very important. But career is a, is a long, maybe a longer timeline. But give me an idea of the timeline of the program, please, in terms of starting date to completion. Right. So the overall program is for two months, uh, the July August period. Of course, it was um, structured that way to allow students uh, during the holiday period to participate um, more deeply. Uh, the July period, we're starting 3rd of July, that's when the, the program opens. And for the month of July, basically, we'll have the different modules in those different areas that I alluded to. And those modules will be completed in July. And then coming um, from the end of 31st of July and the month of August, we have a competition aspect, right? And this is where the, the what we call the power competition aspect. Then basically, they will have to look at problems that affects either the environment, the economy, uh, the community, and even people, and then develop a solution based that, that incorporates technology, and that includes the development of apps. 
um, and describe how they create a business based on that solution. And then they would have to do a digital presentation and they have a chance to win uh, cash prizes and other prizes included. So the power up aspect, um, the competition basically starts um, the 31st of July to the 16th of August, where they will have their submissions, uh, following which a panel will do the judging, and then they will count to the 10 finalists, and we have the final competition on the 29th of August, where the 10 finalists will have to do their presentation about their solution to any of the uh, areas that they have picked, and then based on those judges, then they would have prizes, you know, the top, the top going from first to third, and then everybody gets a prize. But the top three, of course, would get the with the higher prize. And I want I want to add the way the age group for this is from from ten to eighteen years old. So it is um, the, the the age group where hopefully we can make an impact, and hopefully we can in, instill some excitement in them in probably areas they haven't thought about. And moving forward, they can then explore that and develop it even further. And with that, we take a short break. We are speaking about the Innovation Nation training program with Kariri CEO Hans-Eric Schultz. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking about the Innovation Nation training program with a CEO of Kariri, Hans-Eric Schultz. And Einstein says that plays the highest form of research. Now, sometimes the play gets a little serious when you have com uh, competition and some of these prizes that you mentioned involved. But I also wanted to ask, though, the yes, you spoke about partners. How, how easy was it to convince individuals to say, OK, well, this is something that we want to fund. This is something that we want to help support. This is something that we want to help go forward, increase, as you said, the scope and the scale, Mr. Schultz. Well, I think there, there, we have responsible corporate um, citizens out there. And once we showed the value added proposition of what the impact it could have on students, and we put forward the ideas that can allow students to benefit uh, more fully from this, we did get uh, participation. As I said, Republic Bank was is a, one of the biggest main sponsor, and then also have additional from B-Mobile and Atlantic. And we continue to seek and broaden that um, corporate sponsorship. And we're hoping next year we would have even more people joining. And I think the success and the evolution of the program sort of gives it its own dynamic where people can see the impact and can see what's happening. In the competition phase, for instance, we will have representatives from sponsors as well as our technical people um, also judging the competition. So they can visually see this. And this is something that can have a real world application, both in terms of the ability to develop apps and solutions, technological solutions to real world problems, and then also the possibility of then developing those solutions into business models that can then broaden economic activity and allow for greater things to happen involving self-same sponsor or even the wider business community. So I think it's an ongoing thing. And I think as it has evolved and the growth of the program has demonstrated that there's interest. And I think the corporate sponsorship is something that with um is something that we can always look forward to moving forward that to hopefully get some more sponsors involved because the program has developed. I might add every year, um, for instance, last year and this year, we were oversubscribed with the program. So we're hoping that with additional sponsors, uh, additional sponsorship, um, we can broaden the capacity of the program and even the scope of what we do within this, the framework of the program. And I like the fact that you talk about value added and real world applications. Uh, are there any examples that you can give us from previous iterations where this idea was just so ready, it was just such of its time that it was able, someone picked it up and ran with it, or it, it or some, something like that, and it works? Or are we going to have to break open an NDA? No, well, I could tell you from last year's program, for instance, in the in competition aspect, we had 10 finalists and they uh, developed uh, apps to, to apply for real world application. One of the apps, for instance, uh, one of the participants, students from Tobago, she developed an app which uh, related to detection of sargassum seaweed, uh, which we know is a big problem on our shores uh, in terms of detection of it well before it hits the, the shores. Of course, the presentation indicated what is possible and what can be done. 
Of course, developing it on a larger scale would require more input and maybe even you know, financing, but certainly show technically what can be done. We even had another student from, uh, from the central area, which indicated one of the apps she had developed was to indicate floodwaters. She can, you could uh, use the app to determine how deep the flood water is before you actually drove through it and so on. And again, because it's something that they live and they say, listen, this is a problem we have. This is something we have to deal with. Let's develop a solution moving forward. So there's just two basic examples, but I mean, there, there are many more examples of different real-world application, real-world problems that they've had where they developed an app to sort of uh, address it and deal with. And I think all these things have a, a sound basis upon which further development can take place. As we know, all great ideas and wonderful things coming in technology happen at such a fast pace, sometimes you don't even anticipate it. As we see in the wider world, we always have technological solutions being developed and things moving at quite a pace. So why not get that mindset and that thinking where, listen, I can develop something, even as a student, I can develop some technological solution to something that can then be created into a business model and have a, maybe a wider scope and growth moving forward. So that's just some of the examples of what we had used last year. And you're saying that, and that harks to something that I call inner standing, which is a process of education where you are getting educated but looking and seeing how you can apply it to a situation that is around your uh environs you can better build that that community as opposed to saying okay well i learned so i have a piece of paper and now i'm hoping for somebody to employ me or to do something like that but in terms of the getting more information i see that we can log on to well we can visit coding.careery.com but i also want to ask because you said last it was oversubscribed uh what is the cutoff point how do people uh register and is it a first come first serve or you're looking for certain groupings between that 10 to 18 what is that process like well as as you mentioned the the address coding .com, the age group is eight, 10 to 18 years old and um, it is on a first come first serve basis. As I said, we had set the target for about 3,000 students uh, this year. Um, and uh, well, we, I, I believe we have reached that target as of now, but um, still, I would encourage uh, people to, to, to go to the codingcareer.com and see what is possible. And um, as that's, which is why for next year, we want to expand the capacity to allow us to do that. Last year, we had about 2,000 students and this year now we have about 3,000 students. So we're hoping with each year that we can expand that capacity to, to take in that because we always get heavy interest in this sort of um, activity that we offer and program that we offer and hence the importance of the sponsorship in allowing us to expand that capacity. So yes, I would still say you can, you can visit the, um, the site and of course it is on a first come first good basis. An interesting, timely, and important. We want to thank you very much, Hans Eric Schultz, CEO of the Caribbean Industrial Research Institute, or Kariri, for this work that is happening, uh, the Innovation Nation Training Program. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire TGG News team. This has been In Depth with me, DK Rostar. Thank you for joining us.